Listen, I've done my best, but it's no use. We're not getting any additional hours in our day. So we've got to make the most of the time that we do have, which is why I compiled a list of productive things that you can do in less than five minutes. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and let me be clear, these should be productive things. They should produce positive results for you. If you do not have to or want to do any of these, then don't. Just sit and enjoy your five minutes. This is not about doing more. But how many times have you gone to sit down and enjoy your downtime and then been foiled because you've remembered that you have a whole bunch of small tasks to take care of? They add up, so we've got to be sneaky and slip them into our day. Maybe you're queuing somewhere, waiting for the microwave to ding, waiting for your kid to put on their shoes. <laughs> Just five minutes is not going to completely drain your energy or take up all of your time, but it will make sure that you are steadily chipping away at your to-do list. So let's make the most of those small pockets of time so that come the weekend, you can actually sit and relax knowing that everything else is taken care of. First up is something that I hate doing so I try and slip it in between some other things and that way I don't have you know time beforehand to get all anxious about it and also I don't have time afterwards to sit and dissect every single thing and that is making a phone call brings me out in a cold sweat. Now obviously the phone calls that you want to make like to a friend or something can be reserved for later, for your downtime, when you want to enjoy them. For these, I am talking about all of those small little annoying phone calls that you just want to get out of the way. So like making or confirming an appointment. Next then is looking something up. I try to like plan for things in advance if I can. So I might look up directions, look up a phone number, check to see you know, what I'll need to bring with me, those types of things. They're not the things that I want to be doing as I'm trying to get myself out the door. So if there is something that you will need to know or something that you want to know, use a little pocket of time to figure it out. While you're there then, learn something new. Could be a phrase maybe in a foreign language that you're trying to pick up. Could be uh, like an egg substitute for a recipe you're trying. Could be what that button in your car does. So many buttons in my car. Or that extra attachment in your vacuum cleaner. What does it do? Does anyone actually use all of the attachments in their vacuum cleaner? Are you one of those unicorns? <laughs> but enlightenment can be yours if you just look it up. Next is one of my favorites and honestly I think it's underestimated and that is reading. I think sometimes we think that if you can't sit down and read an entire chapter in one go then it's just not worth it. You're not going to be making any progress but actually just by a few minutes of reading every day you can get through a lot of books. Stick to lighter things that don't require a huge amount of concentration but if you have an ebook on your phone then the next time that you get that urge to like just scroll through social media for a few minutes read a page or two of a book. I guarantee that you will be reading way more than you thought possible. Okay that's some of the fluffier stuff out of the way but I know that one of the things that you want to tackle as quickly as possible is cleaning. No one wants to give up their Saturday afternoon to clean so if you can fit it in in small sessions throughout the week, great. That could throw your weekend wide open. I'm gonna assume here that you do not live in a big open plan mansion <laughs> so working off that assumption you can sweep, mop, vacuum, a room or a space in your home in just a few minutes. I always think of clean floors as like the true measure of cleanliness because it's the last thing you do, isn't it? Like first you fo focus on surfaces and things like that, but the floors are the finishing touch. So for me, when I see a clean floor, I automatically assume that the rest of the space is also clean. 
It's just, just one of those magic things, a little hack. Now, maybe you're not quite there yet and nobody is going to be fooled by your clean floors. Then you could take the few minutes to do a task, you know, to clean one area or one thing or do one little chore. There are so many cleaning tasks that you can get done in less than five minutes. You can scrub a toilet. Actually, you can scrub more than one toilet in five minutes. Dusting, you can empty and refill the dishwasher. Trust me on this one because I have timed it because I hate emptying and filling the dishwasher. Irrational, but that's me. Putting on a load of laundry, things like that. Never think that you have to put in a huge amount of effort if you want a really clean home. Just a few minutes here and there can get and keep your home clean and tidy. Your windows will still get washed even if you have to do them one at a time. You don't have to do them all in one go. And I think that's something that we kind of, like with the book reading thing, we tend to think in terms of completion of the whole thing rather than just breaking it down. But yeah, in a few minutes, in fact, your kid will still be looking for their other shoe while you have a window washed. And listen, even without cleaning, you can straighten up a space in just a minute or two. It makes a big difference. I think we all have at least one area in our home that tends to get messier than other areas because that's where we spend most of our time. So while you are waiting for water to boil, you can clear off your desk, you can pick up some toys, straighten the fridge magnets. I can guarantee you that spending even just one minute a day tidying up one space is going to make a significant difference. This next one is something that I do not do often enough and that is to prep food. How much food, and I'm really asking this question to myself, have you thrown out because it was hidden? At the back of the fridge? Or how often have you had a particularly busy week so that when it comes to dinner you just don't have the time to chop up all of those vegetables? End up throwing them out, now they've gone to waste. So when you get a spare minute, wash the spinach, make your child's lunch, or even just take out the ingredients and the cooking stuff, pots and pans, that you will need to make your next meal. And that way, when the time rolls around, if you are short of time, everything's ready to go. When you have the time, do the thing, because you don't know how much time you will have later. And I know my diet would be so much healthier if I just took a few minutes a week to prepare some healthy snacks for myself. Then there's decluttering. This is one of my favorites. Just a quick go through your sock drawer or your junk drawer or some of your kids' old toys. Even if you are out and about, you can still do a really great digital declutter. You can go in and see how many newsletters you can unsubscribe from, how many accounts you can unfollow, how many useless apps or blurry photos you can delete. Oh, and speaking, of getting rid of things. Another great thing to do when you have a few spare minutes is shredding papers. Paper clutter is probably the thing that I get the most questions about. Paper piles up, so if every time you have a few spare minutes and you're working on getting rid of it, you will make a big dent. The bonus is that when you're only doing a few minutes at a time, your shredder won't overheat. Following on from that then, you can empty the bins. You do not want to see my overflowing bathroom bins right now. I'm basically engaged in a game of chicken with my husband to see which one of us cracks first. <laughs> but it's easier to empty the bins that you see on a more regular basis, like your kitchen bins. But then you may have a bin somewhere else in your home, maybe in your bedroom, a bathroom, your home office. And there are also other kind of receptacles like your shredder or maybe the little coffee pod thing where all the used coffee pods fall into in your coffee machine. Those are the things that can get overlooked. So when you've got a few minutes, grab a black sack and just go around, empty all of those things in one go. While we're on the subject of emptying things then, get yourself as close as you can to inbox zero. Now this could be your actual email inbox or it could be a paper inbox. So let's say your post 
is piling up and someday you are waiting for the kettle to boil. That's a great time to whip through them, recycle the junk, file stuff away. If you have the time, reply to something really quickly. Again, it is amazing how much you can get and keep under control just by spending a few minutes here and there on it. Which leads me to writing thank you cards. This is something that I am terrible at. But there's really no excuse. It takes a few minutes, like a minute or two to write the card, a minute to address it, stick a stamp on it, and then the next time you're passing a post box, pop it in and your conscience is clear. Now these next three are prime examples of how you do not need a lot of time to make a lot of progress. The first is journaling. There is this idea that you need to be sitting down for hours with a notebook, emptying out your heart. Like, yeah, you could do that, or you could do what I do, just take a minute to jot down some notes, like things that happened that day, maybe something memorable that stood out. And that's it. It can be as easy or as complicated as you make it. And exercise. I know we have all been led to believe that if you are not sweating it out at the gym for at least an hour, then you may as well be doing nothing. But that's just not the case because how often can you get to the gym for those types of sessions? It doesn't have to be a gym session or nothing. <laughs> like anytime you have a minute or five, maybe during an ad break, do some jumping jacks, do some crunches, do some push-ups, even just some stretching. But a minute or two of that throughout your day, whenever you can fit it in, is still going to be much healthier than doing nothing at all. It's still going to be so much better for your body than doing nothing at all. And then meditating or just mindfulness. I'm not great at the meditating side of things, but mindfulness, yeah, you know, just throughout the day when you've got a minute, stop, stare, think, breathe, just reset yourself. This is such a good one if you find, like I do, that sometimes the days just tend to fly away with you. You know, you're rushing and racing from one thing to the next and before you know it, it's dinner time and like, where did that whole afternoon go? So taking a minute, remind yourself, even setting a little alarm on your phone, but having that time to just stop and pause and check in with yourself. This next one is going to make such a huge difference to your mornings. It's one of the best things that I have ever done. But when you have a few minutes, pick out your outfit for the next day. I'm talking clothes, shoes, underwear, accessories, bag, whatever it may be. Oh, it's just great when you wake up in the morning and you're ready to go. Next then is to write a list. Listen, I know that you have a million things swirling around up here. I certainly do. So get them all down on paper or into an app. The things you have to do, the things you want to do, the things that you want to buy, recipes you want to try, places you want to go, ice cream flavors you want to sample. Go wild, <laughs> you know, but trying to cram it and keep it all up here is why you are feeling so frazzled all the time. Your brain is trying to hold on to a bajillion <laughs> bits of information and memories and things like that. So give it a bit of a break. Stop it from having to constantly sort and categorize and prioritize. That's just too much. <laughs> so let paper take over. Oh, this next one, you won't even realize how important this is until disaster strikes. That is back up your devices. Trust me on this one. And I know you'll get around to, uh, no, do it now, okay? The first time you do it, if you've never done it before, it may take a little bit longer, but from then on, it should only take a few minutes to back up your stuff. Particularly if you get into a really good routine with it. So something I do is do it on a weekly basis. So every Sunday, every Sunday morning, I back up my devices and it's just habit and routine for me now. And then when your phone falls, smashes to smithereens or, your toddler pulls your laptop off the table onto the hard floor or you just spill coffee all over your computer. You will be so glad that you took a few minutes to make a backup. And let's round out 
with this next one because it really highlights the point that you do not need to have like a big huge chunk of time to still make progress on something that is important to you. So I don't hear any excuses on this one. Take another or the first step towards one of your goals. Whatever it is, I don't care that thing that you have been meaning and wanting to do for so long, take that step. You could, if you wanted to, watch this set of videos that I have all about how to set and achieve goals, but any step will do. Forward motion, building momentum, getting yourself where you want to go five minutes at a time. Grav mila mahagwev. Agus vagi me shivshigalua. Slon.